Okay, well it's Jeff again and now I've moved over to a client computer. I've got a different background as you can see. I've got this, uh, this lion over here. Mountain lion. <clears throat> Glad I've never run into one in person by the way. So I ran up ICOM remote utility again and again I skipped over that part of actually loading it because it gives away the information on the disk which we want to keep that from other people, I guess. I don't know. Protect the ICOM. But this thing pops up. Again, I don't use this approach because I don't find it helpful and it's confusing anyway. So I'm going to get rid of this. Now, in this case, when you're running a client that wants to plug into a server, you have to start by creating a client and I have to create the client by telling it where am I going to go to, fix, to hook up to my server. So we need to add a server to this ICOM remote utility. So I'm going to say add. Now, believe me, you don't want to be messing with your public IP at this point. You don't need to. It's wasteful and it's not going to help you anyway. What we're going to do is I know that my system, my local system, is based on uh, 172.16.41 and that particular computer was on 105. I just know that, but uh, it is. I'm going to use the standard control point and there it is, 105, and I say next. Now this is where some of the amazement comes in. This thing's going to go over there and it's going to find that I have left an ICOM remote program running as a server. This is a client connect. Oh, I got to put in, so I'm going to put in my W6FCC and my password here. And I've got that in there, so I'm going to say next. And it says, oh, that's not correct. I must have typed that in wrong. So let me see here, W6FCC. And I think it's, uh, to be honest with you, I've forgotten what my password is. I'm going to pause this while I go find Can't believe it. I forgot my password. But I do know I have another one over here that I call test. So I'm going to go ahead and add, add the server again. And I know that it's uh, 172.16.41.105. This is an internal LAN address. It was not routable on the internet. So this is totally private. Next, it says enter a user ID. I'm just going to put in the one I made up just now, test. And believe it or not, I'm going to put in test, whoops, T-E-S-T, -E 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't know, it doesn't mean anything. I'm not going to keep it in there. But it is a password. It says now connecting to the server. I don't like this approach where it leaves the server description as the IP address. The server description is W6FCC server. Don't know what kind of radios it has, but down here, look at this. Is, oh, it has a radio that I named over there on the server called W6FCC 7C7300, and that all looks pretty good. So I'm going to say finish. Not only did it take it, but I'm now connected. And guess what? It brought over the radio. So at this point, I've created a plug into my server over there. I have a radio and to use RSBA1 all I have to do is right click and say connect or even simpler I go down to the bottom and I say connect and it tells me oops I don't have a virtual COM port useless doesn't matter this is strictly a software issue it is not a real COM port so when I say OK it's going to ask me about a virtual COM port which is just a number I'm going to give it a number 10. Now, it doesn't really matter what number you choose out of this list, but I'd like to stay away from the real ones and stick with the imaginary ones. So I pick COM10. Again, I'm using the default devices here because I'm going to, I have already set up on my client where it goes. And this is another little thing you can change if you want to. I have not changed it. But if you click on this thing that says recommended, you can actually change the delay the, uh, what are they talking about here? This is the pre-buffer and the 
and the transmit buffer and all this stuff, the mod is, is mic audio. It's set up for some number of milliseconds. But if you want to say, well, I'm going off of the internet, then you pick internet and it says, oh, well, we're going to crank back here. You know, we're going to enable a long term uh, buffering before we allow you to transmit. And so now these things got pushed way up. If you're doing what one of our users is doing, running through a satellite, you may have to crank these way up here in order to make them work. But uh, I, don't, I don't want to do any of these things. I'm going to go back and just say I have a LAN connection and, and uh, let it set back to uh, the low numbers. But you may want to use, well, let's, let's put it on the internet. It's a little slower, but if you have a slow internet connection, it's a good idea. Okay, so once you say OK, the virtual serial port is 10. You say OK to that. And we're next next little video is we're actually going to run RSBA1 and connect to this radio.